fan, Dundee United player and Dundee United legend. Join us as we look behind the scenes at Craig's return to Tannerice and his fresh approach to season 2006-07 and beyond. What uh, made you decide on Craig Brewster as his manager? Yeah, I've always admired Craig Brewster, not only as a manager, but also a player. And I think it's worth saying, people may think it's strange, that we brought him to Tandice not only as a manager, but also as a player. Because he was exceptional the last two, three seasons. And I think even next season, 06, 07, we'll still get something out of him. I think his attitude will be totally different from the attitude we've had before. I don't think he's looking for established players to come in here and then perhaps fail at the D United. I think he's looking for hungrier players to come in and establish himself at Tannadice. Craig, I've got full trust with him. We can't talk in terms of a short term fix here. We're going to think in terms of the long term and it may take two, three years before we establish ourselves as a regular top six contender in the SPL. I was at Hibs, um, I got to know Craig Brewster um, as, as, as a player at that time he, he was playing. And um, you know, that, that, I think that's where he's where they kind of he's known me from, you know. So from the Rangers thing, I got the phone call uh, from Craig asking me would I, would I like the opportunity to go and work in senior level. I got the opportunity to go to Dundee United, um, and Craig mentioned that, 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 that Dundee United, you know, for me the size of the club um, and the tradition that the club's got was was another challenge, and I was desperate to to, to come down and, and and have a go at it. Well, this is my third time back at the club, and when I got the chance to, to become play manager again, uh, I was absolutely delighted. The day that he made his debut um, for me was 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 fantastic. You know, the the absolute adoration that the fans had for him that really gave me confidence, and and, and that you know I know that that everybody in the Dundee area wants him there, and 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 you know that that's gave us a real buzz for the future. It was a proud moment actually signing for the club, and. Uh, it was a proud moment that first game, being in charge. I thought the first half was a, a, a wee bit edgy from, from the players. It was a new system they were playing and it took a, a while to settle in. And then the second half, we upped Dante and suddenly the fans recognised that and yeah, the atmo atmosphere was amazing. And Grant Brebner serve up an equaliser. And by Brebner. Well, they got a head on it. Alan Archibald gets the equaliser. And the Dundee United supporters delighted with that strike from Alan Archibald. It's his first goal of the season. Brewster is on for Fernandez. Colin Samuel will be introduced as well. is the player who is coming off. Yeah, Craig Brewster looks to have hurt himself. He's hobbling, he's down. He On a day of much out. anticipation for the United supporters, Joy quickly turned to agony as a freak injury to Craig meant the club would be deprived of his services, not only for the rest of the game, but indeed the rest of the season. I got the opportunity to go on, and uh, 25 minutes later, hobbled off with a fractured tibia and really that was uh, the sign of, of things to, to, to happen from then to the end of the season but uh, that's now passed and hopefully with a lot of changes at the club hopefully things now can, can take off. And this is a view shared by club chairman Eddie Thompson. I was <coughs> vastly disappointed with the results and the performances at the end of last season. Everybody knows that but it wasn't Craig's team. What I have seen in him, uh, I admire. He seems to be a disciplinarian, and he believes by having a discipline, then we'll get better performances. He's certainly a fitness fanatic. He's proved up at uh, Inverness what he can do with what I would call above average players. I think he can do the same with us. Uh, I was disappointed last season. I think he's going to turn that right around for us this season. I thought there was a lot of potential at the club. I think it's been highlighted that. Everybody said that United should be doing better than they, they have been. And uh, since January, it's been tough, very tough. A tough start indeed. And Craig is certainly aware that his legendary status secured by the cup winning goal is now little more than a nice memory. I need a chance for Christian Daly. Has he scored? Brewster has! United ahead! A disaster for Ali Maxwell! Two minutes! into the second half, Craig Brewster gets his 20th goal of the season, Ivan Golad celebrates, and Rangers wonder how it happened, a 
it was amazing the way in which this should never have been a problem for Rangers. The pass back from McPherson. It was driven against Daly by Maxwell. He couldn't recover. Daly hit the ball off the post. The supporting player was Brewster. And Dundee United are in front. Daly did well to keep that across the goal. And the first player to react was Brewster. Goff fires the ball forward. There's Mikhailichenko. Now Alec Cleland lofting it out towards Nixon. All eyes for the referee. Bundy United have won the tenth Scottish Cup. And the celebrations go on. Craig Brewster, the goal scorer, getting treatment there for cramp as these United supporters begin the celebrations. That, uh, the goal I scored in the, the, the cup final is a long time ago for me. That uh, Yeah, it's nice to have nice memories, but from now, the only vision from me is getting United back up into that top six. Simple as that. You've got to see what they can bring to, firstly, uh, myself and, and obviously the team. And uh, Malky is very much outgoing person, loud personality, and you need that. If I if I'm, if I say all my staff. At the end of the day, I'll take I'll take the pressure, but you know if we lose, you guys have to keep the uh, smile on your faces and uh, keep these players upbeat as as best we can, because it's important. If 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 players see staff going about you know with their heads down, it makes it very difficult. So we always need, or my staff always need to be upbeat, and that's why I picked Malky. I was 13 when I signed, I went full time at 16 um, and, and played there till I was about 23, 24. Um, and then from there I, I got myself involved in <laughs> answering the phone. Car, I'm on the telly, can't I believe you? <laughs> I'm on the television and you're phoning me. I'll phone you, I'll phone you back, right? You're, you're no important at this stage to me. I'll just fly out my way. I think he's a very secure person um, and, and, he, and he trusts the people that he employs implicitly. Um, you're held accountable as well, you, you know, you're not there for, for no reason and um, you must, you must, in my eyes anyway, you know, you've got to give a return, you've got to give your opinion, you've got to stand up. Um, but certainly, he's, for me, it's great, it's great to work with, with somebody of his standard given that it gives you the trust, the responsibility, because that's what makes your job. I enjoy working for Craig, I enjoy working with the, 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 the group of lads that we've got just now. And and for me, for me to coach, that's what I want to do. I want to coach, I want to be an energy, I want to, I want to be, you know, because um, I think you're always learning all the time, uh, looking, in, and looking at new ideas and learning off other people. And I think the manager's job is a, is a very specific, Job. I think there, I don't think there's too many people can do that job. I think you've got to be very, very. I think you've got to be a kind of a, a one-off type personality. You know, I think that's a hard, hard job to to do. You know, we're looking for the guys to get into pre-season um, and and come out it with, with with a fitness level, an energy, and enthusiasm to play. We'll obviously need to get a, a a settled team on the park, but not just a settled team in the park. Have have uh, the younger guys or the guys that maybe not made the the, the first eleven. Um, they're chanting at the bit, and they're, they're, they're pushing the guys around the park, so there's a real competition level there. And then we'll just take game by game, and, and hopefully we can start to, to take from the training ground and, 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 and the pre season and put it into games, and hopefully we can, we can get results. We both very much enjoy playing 4 4 2 just now. I think we both enjoy um, the, the hard work ethic about, about football. Um, the enthusiasm, um, and there's, there's, there's wee specifics that that, that that I've learned from him, you know, and, and the way that he, as a striker he sees the game 
as his, his, as he's played as a striker, you know. And for me, having been more defensive minded and been brought up on that side, it, it's been good to 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 kind of share those views and 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 and, and I've kind of developed a wee bit as well with, with his experience. From from the time I went to Greece, I looked at things uh, certainly more off the park than on the park because very much football is similar training facilities and training throughout the world but uh, behind the scenes and, and off the park uh, it certainly opened my eyes and I thought if ever one day I became a manager I'd sort of try and implement these things. But lots of things behind the scenes um, of, of opened my eyes um, right down to what the manager's done in the dressing room he's, he's revamped the whole place he's gave it a freshness you know Nobody's taken the upon themselves to say, right, this needs done or that needs done. I've said to the chairman that I'm not just interested in only the football side. I'm interested in the image of Dundee United being lifted. And I've taken it upon myself to get rid of the bars and the windows because it was a prison. I said to the guys the last day of pre-season, the last day of the season, I said, I realise this place is a prison, guys. I said, but come first day of pre-season you will notice massive changes I said and from that day on no excuses guys absolutely none and as you've taken a walk around and you've seen the place totally different I've freshened the place up totally painted it and when you walk in open that door and you see the corridor with the, the bright smiling faces and, and the posters that it's what I'm looking for, a smile when these guys come in that park. And hopefully, then, they'll look forward to coming in, and they'll look forward to going to work. When we came in here, there was, there was, we were training in junior parks, and, you know, the junior parks have maybe been played on at the weekend, and they're, they're, they're not in the best shape, you know. However, it's, we're not any different to any other club in the, in the SPL, everybody's the same, they're all Darting about trying to get training facilities. The benefit is that we're all together, 19s in the first team. They're going to be training uh, next to each other. It's a very good facility, a lot of grass. We've got the gymnasium there. Whereas last season, we train at either Violet or North End. So you have one park. So the under 90s would go and set up the goals. Then go way down to Gardine Road, do their training, come all the way back up to collect the stuff. So everything will, will be on hand. Gordon, the chef, will come over. He'll make up some food in the morning, bring it over, and the guys can can eat lunch there. So it's a massive benefit for from my point of view. We as as uh, me as manager and we as coaches can go out, set up everything. So when the players walk out onto the, the training park, bank, everything is organised. Whereas here, we have to maybe set up, uh, set off 15 minutes to go and set up everything. And then the players come up. So everything there, you're, you're walking 100 yards to set up things rather than driving a car. So the, the benefits for me, I think, will be uh, really, really good. And... The, the other benefit, the mother, massive benefit is <clears throat> after we finish training, we, if, you know, Barry Robson, Gary Kenneth, boys doing extra, they have to, you know, get the gear, get the gear in because we're, we're jumping back on the bus to travel back. They can spend there all, all afternoon, whatever they want to do, hitting free kicks. Practicing their headers, passing, everything will be there. So we don't have to then jump on a bus to go back to, to the stadium. This current manager has shown willing to, to play young players because it's got, you need two things to have a successful youth development system. One is you need to have players who are good enough, but secondly, you need to have the opportunity for them to play. And one without the other doesn't work. And I think perhaps over the last two or three years, we've maybe missed out on a couple of players who would have been good enough, in my opinion, but never got the opportunity. The last few games of the season, there was quite a lot of the young lads came in and done particularly well. Um, I've also seen the signing of the 10, 
youngsters, how important is the, the youth development, bringing through the youth in your vision of what you want to do here? Stevie uh, has brought in for the under-19s about 10 players. So hopefully that uh, gives them a, a new challenge because uh, one, for most of the time the, the under-19s were bought in the league last year. Now, that's not good enough for a club of, of this size and this potential. So we have to readdress that and that's what we've done. Over and above that 10 are David Goodwillie, of course, who's the same age as them, and John Gibson, who's been full-time for a year, who's a goalkeeper, six-foot-three-inch goalkeeper, who we've really got high hopes for. So, in fact, there are 12 of these kids. Now, that's very unusual. We've never had 12 uh, at the same age before. And the only reason we've taken them on is because they're, they're so exceptional. Uh, it's not to fill spaces or, or anything else. In fact, it's been difficult to find space for as many as that. Um, we once took on 10 before. And that was in, uh, the time, I think, of Gary Bolan and, and people like that when they played in, if some maybe remember back to the, the World Cup final at under-16, the game at Hampden Park. Well, we had six, I think, players in that squad, or six or seven players in that squad, and then we added a few other ones in. So that was the time we were taking double figures. Never since then have we taken double figures. Our average tends to be seven-ish, six, seven, eight, that sort of number every year. The younger boys <clears throat> have acquitted themselves well, especially when they've, they've came in at the tail end of the season when... There was a lot of pressure on everybody at the club. There was, um, you know, the, the size of the club as well. The expectation levels at Dundee United are, are far greater than at, at Cali Thistle. So for the young guys to come in there and, and, and handle that, you know, um, Cameron's, uh, who, who's come in and been fantastic. I mean, a real enthusiastic young boy with a bright face, and you know, really that, that that's that for me. That enthusiasm it gives me enthusiasm. That, that or makes me enthusiastic. Sorry that, that I see him with that that passion. You know. Uh, the young boy Stuart Abbott came in, um, Robertson has, has, has came in and done well and strung a couple of games together. Um, Trigger at left back, so there's been <coughs> there's been there's been there's been lots and obviously um, uh, Goodwillie, who's who's came on and obviously he's a very very young boy, but that is that's that's the 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 essence I think a football club that these young guys are going to get the opportunity, and our manager just now is not scared to give young boys an opportunity if they're good enough and if they work hard enough. And if they show the appetite. There's very little reported regarding investment in youth. Mm -hmm. um, how highly do you value the commitment to youth? And to that end, what sort of percentage of the budget is earmarked each year for this cause? Yeah, I'm not sure if I agree with you necessarily when you say little is reported about the investment in youth. Uh, my expectation for this forthcoming season, which is 06 07, the kind of investment in total, taking everything into account, the coaching and the youth and the costs and so on. Probably the cost of the United is close to about half a million pounds. And I think it's worth noting that we did sign on to professional forms at the end of the season, just finished 10 young lads to come in as professionals at the club. The last time we had such a number as that, I think it was way back to about 1984. Also, I think during the course of last season, we played eight teenagers, which is probably more than any SPL throughout the season. And from what I remember, the last game at Motherwell, when we had Gartner on, uh, we had Cameron on, we had Goodwillie, and we had Easton, and we had Gary Kenneth. And I think these five players were probably under 20. So we're certainly devoting a lot of time to the youngsters. And I think I've got to say, as far as Craig Bruce is concerned, a lot of these young lads were not really getting any chance under prior management. And we brought them through, and one or two have produced one or two pretty good performances towards the end of last season. May find themselves featuring from the first game of the Sam League season. So we're going to work on the use. We're still going to bring in some players who are reasonably established professional players, and I think it's a mixture of the two between these established. Uh, prior to that, we'd just been trying to buy a team. Uh, I think these young lads, they're paid a lot less. They're hungry. Many of them, interestingly, are the United supporters, and there's no harm in that either. So our investment, probably about half a million pounds in 06, 07 years. As long as the club keeps providing the opportunity, and my system keeps providing the standard of players, then I'm quite confident for the future. Uh, the job obviously entails uh, something that the players need during the week, um, as far as training, uh, years concerned and everything. And then you've got your match day situations like 21s, under 19s on a Friday, and you've got your first team on a Saturday. Um, it starts off on a Monday morning with uh, getting the training gear all sorted out. Each player has got uh, a, a young apprentice 
uh, and uh, to them, you know, and, and they look after uh, those players' needs uh, as far as uh, training gear, boots, everything's concerned. So they've got that to do on a Monday morning, every morning, as far as training is concerned. Get it all laid out and get it ready for the players coming in. Um, once they come back from training, um, it's all taken and in baskets through the back, and then we get it all washed again. It gets washed and dried, put into the ducats. Um, there's ducats in there which are all numbered for each player. Each have their own individual ducat, which they keep their own personal stuff in, whichever they're in. So the players know where to go and get it. It's not just lying all over the place. So it's very well organised as far as that's concerned. Um, the 21's playing a Tuesday, so I've just got to get all the gear all sorted out. I start that on a Monday afternoon and uh, start packing it. So wherever they're going to go, if it's an away game, it's got to be packed. Um, if it's a home game, then depending on where we're playing, if it's a if it's a junior park, then obviously we've got to pack the gear. Sometimes it could be at Tannadice, so we just set the dressing room out accordingly. The young boys play their games on a Friday, and then we've got the first team on a Saturday. So Friday's a very, very hectic day, um, because you've got the young boys to get sorted out as far as their kit's concerned. On top of that, we've got the first team as well. But obviously, first team's priority. Uh, the young boys help out as much as they possibly can, and they get their, they get their own gear uh, sorted out as much as possible because my main priority is the first team for, for a Saturday. So we got all the boots all sorted out, everybody's boots are all done. Some players have got three sets of boots, and then four sets of boots, depending on what it is, but they've all got to go one way or another. They've all got to be packed and obviously um, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, shorts, socks, strips, uh, towels, everything gets packed uh, into the containers and everything. All set for the bus to get pick, pick them up on the Saturday morning and then take them to the game. And then obviously then, once they're there, uh, we go for a pre-match meal and uh, I leave early and I, I go on the bus with the, with the gear and set the dressing room out uh, for the match. So when the players come in, everything's all set out for them. Boots are all set out, gear, everything. And that's, that's the way we like to go about things like, you know. On, on the match, how do you keep track of, of the individual players' you know, personal requests? Um, well. The, 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 the way that I keep uh, in touch with everybody is that I make sure everybody's got what they're wanting, right? you know what I mean? Um, uh, I think it's, uh, it's imperative that everybody's got to be spot on. The last thing a gaffer wants on a Saturday is any problems with somebody not having something, you know? They've all got special gear, they've all got their own slips and under armours and whichever like, ankle socks, slips, so they've all got in, uh, each individual stuff, which is basically uh, I know who's his what and whichever like. Has there been any bizarre requests or has there any players sort of off? Specific things that are uh, bizarre. Well, I think we could maybe go back to the Scottish Cup final um, at Hamden um, when I was setting all the strips out and everything. And uh, each player um, has their own sort of um, wants. I like to see short sleeve and long sleeve tops. And uh, this time we had a, a problem with one of the players. Um, Instead of having a long sleeve top, we had a short sleeve top. They were ordered and they didn't come in until about a day before the, the, the game. And obviously everything was just put together and uh, when I went to hang them out, uh, Paul Ritchie found that he only had a short sleeve top and he wears a long sleeve top. So <laughs> there was, to say, a slight problem there. Um, so between then, so that we're talking about what half past twelve, one o'clock, um, I, I, I just didn't know what to do. But what I had in the bag was, I had a long sleeve top with no number on it, no name on it. So I went and had a wee chat with the SFA and they've got, uh, they've got a manufacturer in Glasgow that does their stuff. And uh, we managed to get a hold of them with the logos for the SFA, which we went up to the office to get. Uh, they had the lettering and they had the numbering. So we had to send one of the boys up my taxi with the, with the top to get it done and came back. It was back at 10 minutes to 3 just before the game started. And, Obviously, Paul Ritchie was over the moon with that one. <laughs> but that was bizarre at the time, like, but uh, we got over it. <laughs> You're probably talking about a range, maybe about size 70, size 13. Size 13 being Big Kenneth, Big Kenneth, Big Gary, you know what I mean? So, he's getting beat. <laughs> aye, aye, takes up half the box <laughs> if he's got four pair of boots. <laughs> This is my kit room, right? This is where all my stuff would be <coughs> for match days, right? right? I would set it out accordingly, but all the kit's not in yet, okay? So basically, what we're going to do is just wait till all the kit comes in and accordingly. You can see there, goalkeeper's match day gear, 
sweatshirts, wet tops, t-shirts, warm up sweatshirts. Okay, this is 21s, this is first team. Okay, eventually we'll have 19s, 21s, and first team once the season starts. That the all these shelves will be all set out accordingly. Okay, this is. This is the ducats I was saying to you in the interview. This is where all the training gear is. So first thing in the morning, all the training gear is here. The boys will put it out accordingly in the dressing room. Um, they've got a towel, they've got a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, a pair of shorts, and they'll have a pair of socks as well. Um, there's two set of gear this year. There's red and there's blue. Everything's black shorts. But they've got a blue sweatshirt, blue t-shirt, and a red sweatshirt. <laughs> So that's that there. So what we'll do is, we'll, this is all the staff gear, it's all laid out. This is for the staff, uh, it's just all laid out for them. That's They're basically getting the same as the uh, the first team boys. Um, it's all laid out there for the, for them coming in. So we'll take this stuff through the dressing room lads and uh, we'll just set it out. As you can see, I've got the stuff already set out here, so that's basically all set out for the first team coming in uh, on uh, Monday morning. Um, they'll, all get a, they'll all get a t-shirt, they'll all get uh, a tracksuit, a uh, jacket, and there's a bag there for them as well. On top of that, you see the training gear that's through there. The training gear that's through there will be set out accordingly for them as well on Monday morning when they come in. So basically that's it, and as you can see, it's all been beautifully done. Uh, new hooks, new new uh, furnishings and whichever light, floors all done up. Uh, what a difference, the carpet, so, so um, it's nice and fresh. Obviously in match when the players come in, kits all laid out for them. Kits all laid out accordingly, that's yeah. We'll start from number one from here and work its way all the way around to number 18. There's 18 players on a match day, there's seven subs and 11 in the park in a Premier League game. So. Whereas in the 21s, you've only got the five subs, it's only 16. But on a match day, first team, it's 18 players. So one starts there and goes all the way around to 18. So, the, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a no case then that players have got individual seats in there, is it? Some have their own individual seats, uh, they, they prefer where to sit. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you, um, it'll go 1 to 18. But you might have number one here, you might have number... 16 here, who prefers, if that's his jersey but he's a right full back or whatever it may be, it'll be set out accordingly with the first 11, the first 11 pegs, and then the rest are set out as subs, you know what I mean? So it'll not go as numbers are concerned, 1 to 18, and it'll just, whatever their squad number is, in whichever position they're playing, and the 11 will decide where they sit. But there's other, there's, there's players do have their own specific place where they want to sit, you know. And on, on the Friday afternoon after you've laid all that out, mm -hmm. you go out the door, sure. I go out the door, I go out the door and uh, it's locked, everything's locked, so nobody gets back in here again till Saturday to come back in after pre-match. That's it, done and dusted, so it's locked. Yeah. What I would normally do is put the strips the other way around, as in the number and the, the name to the wall, so just in case somebody does come in, then <laughs> nobody sees anything, so that's it. And then as soon as I come in, the doors open, I just go and turn them around and put them out accordingly so that when the boys come in, everything's set out for them. Their boots, their shinies, their flip flops are all laid out underneath uh, the benches. What's the best thing about being rattled? Um, probably the joy they give you when they go and do things which you don't expect them to do, and probably being better than Dundee. It's a family occasion, sadly. The best thing about being in Arab is that uh, just that kind of general sense.